He was fired because this offense is lost. And most importantly, number 17 is lost. You had a Ferrari that was this Bills offense with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and all these pieces. And you gave the keys to a guy with a learner's permit and it didn't work out. This is the Buffalo Plus Podcast, brought to you by Connors and Ferris. All right, welcome into a special edition of the Buffalo Plus Podcast in our brand new podcast studio, presented by Connors and Ferris, Mike Catalana, Dan Fates. I am Jenna Cottrell. Gentlemen, we are holding this emergency podcast. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, because Ken Dorsey is no longer the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills. Mike, why now? They're in a panic mode at the moment. I mean, they really are. They're five and five. There's seven games left in the season. I think they could have made this move a month ago. They gave Dorsey opportunities. I will say one thing. He's not fired because of the way they played specifically in the game against the Broncos. I find that take, and it's a big national take, to be idiotic. It's people who have not watched this football team. Josh Allen was bad in that game. The Bills turned the ball over. They dropped a few balls, all those things. He was fired because this offense is lost, and most importantly, number 17 is lost. I've said it before. I will say it again. It didn't work. You had a Ferrari that was this Bills offense with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and all these pieces, and you gave the keys to a guy with a learner's permit, and it didn't work out. Mike makes the point. Probably could have been fired a month ago. And... We talked about it yesterday as we are running on what? We're running on adrenaline and coffee at this point. Yeah. Like th- that's yeah. pretty much all this is. We got home at like 3.30 last night. This, Ken Dorsey was a dead man walking. Whether he got fired today, whether he got fired before the bye week, or whether he got fired in the off season. Yeah. So the sense of, oh, he's the fall guy. Somebody, you had to do something. And what it comes down to most, and we talked about it last night, was protecting and trying to get Josh Allen back to being Josh Allen because that's what seems the most loss out of all of this, and that is what you can't afford. You can afford to rotate an offensive coordinator. You can afford, if the Pagulas think that it's the best for Josh Allen is to move on from Sean McDermott, which I know a lot of people out there are calling for, that's fine. But the main thing has to be getting Josh Allen back to who Josh Allen is. He's like a shell of himself out there. We talked about it last night, what we've seen throughout this season. I mean, we're halfway through the season as well. So, yeah, I think when people are like, hey, it's McDermott's got to go, this is the first move in the series of moves. If that were to ever happen, it's got to be Dorsey first, though, considering where this offense is at, the talent that we talked about, the execution that we have seen this team do. We talked to Josh Allen last week. He's like, I remain confident in the process because we've seen it happen before. But yet at the same point, this offense has been so consistently inconsistent in their ability. To put I don't up know. I, I mean, I see the EPA and the DVOA <laughs> and you know, the numbers are good. We've said this before. I don't want to dismiss the numbers. Like they don't exist. But come on, fellas, ladies, watch the games, yeah. listen to the quarterback, look at the score. Like the issue is not, in general, what they do in certain circumstances, which is what those numbers measure. Yeah. The issue is it's a quarterback who you say is a Ferrari. He was in his career has played at an elite level. Yep. Yeah. And now he's, I said it last night, just a guy. Mm-hmm. How does Josh Allen become just a guy? Well, even Dan Orlovsky saying on the Pat McAfee podcast, like, this was an easy Bills <laughs> offense to prepare for. And when someone, I mean, obviously he has his caliber, a former NFL quarterback, but when someone like that is just turning on the tape, Dan, and can easily tell, that to me is a huge. It goes back to last season. The Vikings game. When they lost to the Vikings, yeah. Patrick Peterson went on a podcast and said, I knew because Gabe Davis lined up here, I knew he was running yeah. one of two routes. Like, you're going out and openly telling people and that I know what you're going to do. And then Patrick Peterson intercepted the and ball. Then, and That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Then he then did say, it. Yeah. It's like, they didn't then say like, Hey guys, we got to make some changes. Like, let's rip this thing up and let, let's start over. No, they kept smashing their head against the wall. Jenna, as you so eloquently put it, they kept getting with the hit with the bag of crap. And then we're saying, Hmm, flowers <laughs> or daisies or what? This is why change had to be made again. It, it was going to happen eventually. And honestly, I think 
the, the fact that it's made now at five and five gives you a tiny bit of they're not packing it in for the season. Because I think if they're packing it for the season, I think they just roll the ball out there. They play the last seven games with Dorsey. They know that he's a dead man walking. You move on. I feel like the pressure has just been turned up so much, though. On Sean. On, exactly. That's why I feel like because it was all coming back on Sean, he was like, I got to do something. I got to make a move. I got to get some of the pressure and alleviate some of that and give myself a little extra room in terms of the runway. I don't think Sean would have been doing his head coaching duties if he just wanted to roll out you know, the whipping boy of Ken Dorsey to sit there and go, well, he's going to be far at the end of the year. Might as well just keep rolling him out there. Like, you have to make a change. You, yeah. you have to do something. Yeah, I, I see that. And I think he did. And that's why after the game, when McDermott was asked, like, are you planning on going to make a drastic change? Yeah. And he kind of bought himself a little bit of time. But at the end of the day, <laughs> only a few hours. hours. I mean, well, we were leaving right? Orchard Park yesterday at 1.30 in the morning, driving by. Sean McDermott's office light was still on. And of course it was because of all the fire and all the upset, all the criticism. And it's like Ken Dorsey. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised because we've talked so much about Sean being a loyal guy, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, the numbers are the numbers in terms of this offense has not been good enough and something needed to. You made the point about McDermott. Blame falls on him here. No question. Sure. Because this team is in all phases has had issues. We don't even get a chance really to talk about the special teams. Yeah. They're a disaster. Yeah. Okay. So you have that. The defense is Dan puts you know they're held together with duct tape and they play hard but they've had chances to end games yep. they didn't get it done yeah. but this issue has been the offense john mcdermott moved on from his defensive coordinator he took over the role of dc in my opinion while he's done a very good job with that it has taken away from his role as the head coach mm -hmm. i think there's just moments he's not there the last bullet is to change the offensive coordinator yep. so i don't know and we can talk about joe brady i don't know if joe brady's gonna be there for a little while but the issue now for the rest of this year, sure, you want to fight to make the playoffs. I think a bigger issue for this franchise is to get Josh Allen Agreed. back to looking and feeling like Josh Allen. How much of this goes on Josh Allen? There's a lot that a lot. goes on him. He's made some dumb mistakes. He, Yes, I, I don't love the play calls. I don't like the formations. I don't like the pace that they play most of the time. I don't like that they don't use motion. I don't like that they don't put the quarterback, all those things. What do you like? <laughs> but there are moments when Josh is back to throw, he's thrown a pick on that same route, I think, four times this year. And you know the exact one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I did it last night. And I'm like, that is still on Josh Allen. It's his read to make that throw on the fourth down play. I mean, Dalton Kincaid takes two steps. He's got the first down. Just throw him the ball. That's what he's there for. And they don't get the fourth down play. So he has made mistakes. I am not absolving him. But I say to you guys, Josh Allen's going to be around longer than anybody else. He's got the longest leash. Yeah. Got to fix him. Yeah. It's also, I think, with the testament, and it goes back to Dan Orlovsky. Again, I think when he talks about football, I listen, especially on the Bills, talking about how schematically they're broken. And again, I'm not trying to be an all-22 you know, offensive coordinator on my couch. But, like, Mike, he's throwing a pick on that same play several times. Like, do something different. <laughs> like, like, like I, I, I don't get How it. How could like, you be so controversial yet like, so You brave. know what I'm saying? Like, and it's one of the things, too. Orlovsky is also saying that there's nothing that is schemed up for Stephon Diggs. And this has become a thing where it's like, hey, by the way, when the offense isn't going well, just throw it to 14. How about you force a couple balls to him? I've said it before. It's okay to force it to 14. And it, it goes back. We'll bring up Brian Dable. He had about five to seven plays. They were go-to plays. They were bread and butter identity defining plays that when they really needed a first down, when things were kind of going haywire, when right. Josh smash that button. When, when yeah. Josh was a little bit lost, they had those plays. He went, Hey, settle in, Josh. We're gonna go run this play in this play, and then we'll get going again. There was never any of that for 25 games the, uh, of, of Ken Dorsey. It was clunky. It was what did Sean say? It was hectic at times. It was an adventure. Adventure. He could That's talk the about last it. thing I want my offense to be called. An adventure. Yeah. But it's true because we've seen all of what this team has been. And you're right. It never felt, it always felt disjointed. Even when there was big chunk plays, you're like, okay, well, what's going to happen next? Um, Dan, do you want to just look towards the camera and just go like that? Yeah. Take your bow. Yeah, take your bow. Because pre-hiring of Dorsey, you said. Where are the, where are the mugs? Dan was right. Actually, yeah, we got to get some mugs. 
But I get why the we Bills. I get why the Bills made the move initially to go with Dorsey That's because fair. that was the guy that Josh Allen. Wanted. Josh wanted him. I get he why you been, did that. And and he had been on the staff. Mm -hmm. He had Correct. worked with Dable. They thought they were going to continue continuation. What Dable had they started. thought wrong. They, they did get they it did. wrong. They did. They did. And that was my thing. And for so we were talking about this on the drive home yesterday at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> we're on our drive home. And we're all going, well, that's hindsight to know that Dorsey wasn't going to pan out. And I said, uh, 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 not for this guy, not for this guy that was driving. It wasn't hindsight. I said it when they hired him, he wouldn't have been my first choice. And I went you back did. and listened. You did. And I went back and, I and listened. That I have to say that. And I right. went back and listened to the pod. It's called Dable to Dorsey. Like what's next for the Bills offense. And I said, this is a bad job for Dorsey to take because I said, either you, if Josh regresses, you're going to get the blame. And if the offense succeeds, you're not going to get any of the credit because you're just continuing what Brian Dable and Josh Allen have already done. It was a lose-lose spot for, for Ken Dorsey. I hope, wish him the best. I I, I think he'll pick up and, and continue on his career because I think he is, can be a good coordinator of down the road. But this is an example of like, look, Brian Dable failed five times as a coordinator. Like, it's hard to be an offensive coordinator. It is very, it is constantly criticized. But somebody has to take the fall. If you want to call him the fall guy, a change had to be made change did have to be made you were right in terms of love saying that, that. oh i know which it makes me I, I opened up this door didn't i you, you did i mean you literally told him i to gave him the chance to take a bow and then he just went on he's going to do it two more times in his pod Dunk all over his head. i get why they made the move i also get why they had to move on it, yeah it, it, it all makes sense but joe brady now coming into this position so he was the passing game coordinator at lsu obviously worked closely with joe burrow then was the offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers mm -hmm. under Matt Rule. That did not go well. He didn't do a whole ton. He didn't do a lot of play calling responsibilities in terms of LSU. I mean, Mike, they're in a weird spot now, but there's seven games left in the season. I mean, what does Joe Brady have to do? Just take this this offense down to the brass tacks? What he has to do or what he will do? Because oh. what he will do is do what Sean McDermott wants him to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, Dan. I'm going to watch his face to react to this. They are going to run the football more. They are going to run it more because the passing game in general is broken. And they yeah. showed an ability to run it a little bit more. I'm not saying they're going to be a running team. I'm saying is they're going to do that because they need to get Josh Allen back on track. They need to be scoring points and have the offense. Be yeah. And look, I make fun of the numbers. I like the numbers. I like the analytics, but the biggest number you come up with is scoring points with your offense. I mean, you just have to, yeah. and this offense has failed in all those circumstances. The first halves are a joke, an absolute joke with this team. They're averaging seven points a game, seven in the first, half. In the first half, which is fourth lowest in the league. And, and that can only be so behind the, the giants, way, the Cardinals and the Patriots. And you yeah. played teams like the giants the Broncos the who gave up 450 points to the Dolphins in that one game. Is that bad? The Giants who have given up 100 in each game to the Cowboys, and you lost to the Patriots. You lost these three games. Not all on the offense, a lot on the offense. So what it has to be done, I, Joe Brady is <laughs> – it's like short week. Hey, Joe, come here, take over. Josh is, you know, not right, and you're playing the Jets. Go get them. I will. I agree, though, in terms of you need to get the offense just moving in a positive direction. And right now, that is the run game. Quarterback oh. under center more, run the ball more. I'm telling you, this I, doesn't you mean this is who they're gonna. Though. You need to build confidence. You gotta. I don't think you build Josh's confidence up by taking the ball out of his hands. I'm I not talking a... about. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about you run it 40 times. Yeah. They ran it at least effectively last night. They ran it when they needed to and went down the field. Great call. The uh, James Cook bounced the ball on the turf, yeah, pick it back up and run it in the end, it. run it towards the end zone. But they need a little bit of a different identity than just third and nine. Josh scrambles around, throws it up. I mean, yeah. that's what they've done. And maybe scheme a play or two for 14. How Josh Allen that? went from sprinting to stumbling. You got to get yeah. him back up to where he was. And I think by having a run game that complements and gives some confidence that it gives the ability for this offense to at least get some positivity going. Yeah. How about easy throws? Also that, okay. that is also there a thing. And I, guess, I guess that's where I'm at. And I, you know, you look at what the Las Vegas Raiders did. They fired Josh McDaniels and they had Devonte Adams and they just pretty much said, Hey, we're going to throw it to him a lot. Like <laughs> let, let's not make this like, again, it's a short week. And we talk about simplifying 
the Bills simplified their game plan when they played the Bucs on that short week, and it worked. It was awesome, and they did what the Bills do well, and they went up tempo, and they spread the, you know, they were able to spread the ball out. Like, why don't you just say this week, like, hey, we're just going to feed Stephon Diggs until he throws up. Like, say let, that's not what they do. Well, first of all, that's what I'm saying. In this week, they're playing against the Jets. Sauce Gardner has played well yeah. against yeah. him. This is a really good Jets defense. Phenomenal Jets defense. Yeah. And you've got to protect Josh Allen in this game. I'm just saying, is over under is like got to be like 12 in this game. Oh. I think it's 13. Yeah. This is going to be yeah. an Iowa football game. <gasps> okay. It's gross. Yeah. I'm just saying, is we sit there in the media room and watch Josh Allen. You guys see him on the sidelines. He's not right. Nope. He's not right. No. This is goal number game. one. After the game sitting there, I was saying to you guys last night, come on, Josh. Like, there is blame that goes to Josh here, yeah. and he needs to own it. He owned it in the Jets game. And I'm also going to say, I, for, for your life, I like the low positive. For your football life, I don't like the low positive. I don't like his vibe on the field. And I know some of that comes from the success. And I know he's got these moments, but – I see him after the game, and I'm like, come on, Josh. You're the leader of this team. Mm -hmm. People and react to him. They too. do. And you hold some responsibility to your friend getting fired. Absolutely. He does. And so I'm, I'm not saying he can't. I think the guy is a phenomenal player. I want to see that come back, yeah. and something needs to be done right now. It seems almost that he doesn't care, and I know that that's not the case. Yeah. Sometimes it just seems like he's so dejected, so drained, so, so almost almo checked out. Almost like aloof. Yeah. Where resigned is what I feel. Like he that's like a good it's word. like, yep, this has happened. Where losing yes. before was like it's hard to win in this league when your quarterback plays like shit. Yeah. Said that week one. This was this was Jets like. They used game. to talk about the Yankee team and how Derek Jeter used to be everything and like like his vibe and the way that he carried himself reverberated through that clubhouse. He would he bat lead off, and whether or not he got a hit, he would come back to the dugout and was like, "This guy ain't got it today." Yeah. Like even if it was Randy Johnson throwing a hundred, because if he came back to the dugout and his teammates were like, "Oh, Jeter got out, I got no chance." Yeah, Josh has to have that, and like he did, he he's had that before. I, I, we talked about like him screaming up and down the the line in Kansas City in, in the AFC Championship game. Like that's the Josh. It's the drunk carnival ride that we that you fell in love with. That hey, I'm gonna take on a linebacker in the middle of the field. Yeah, it's not smart. I get it. But there has to be some of that. Some. F it. I'm going for it. Yes. Follow me. I'm Josh guys, Allen. Guys, yeah. get on my back. I'll carry you. I think he can still that. be that and not be dumb. Like, yeah. people are saying he's got run. But don't try to run the guy over. Just save yourself for another play. But you can still make plays with his feet. And, you know, people say, oh, they don't, they don't let him run. McDermott was mad about him taking hits in the run game. Yeah. You watch Russell Wilson. What'd he do? That dude slides faster than um, Trey Turner. I'm just trying to think of who slides. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like he gets down. He does not take a hit. They're running around. Even when he's sacked, he doesn't take big hits. I think that's what they're talking about with Josh. But I do think there is a part of him. It needs to get, that's not going to happen like that. It's not going to yeah. happen Sunday. Well, you talking about it, I'm curious what Josh Allen we will see even this week at practice at the facility, if there will be a different kind of vibe to him, if he will feel a little bit lighter or if he will have more input or what that will don't be know. like. I don't think I don't lighter. know either. I, I yeah. mean, look, he's tight They're with not Dorsey. They're not cigarettes or cigars. I know, but as close as he was with Dorsey, it always felt very different than his relationship with Dorsey. Sure, but the guy got fired. Yes. This is not Dayball leaving for a head coaching job. I'm not saying Josh is going to be joking, laughing, all that stuff, but I'm curious what his response will be and what he will tell this us. This is the first time, and hopefully for him, the first time in his career that coach got fired on his watch, right? It's his coach. He was fortunate. He had Dayball for that period of time. This does happen in the league, yep. whether it's a head coach, right? I mean, look at the look at the great quarter. Uh, coaches around the league or quarterbacks around the league who've played Brady had his guys the whole time, yeah. basically the whole time. Yeah. That's so rare. Um, this happened. So Josh so has to respond. Well, I, there's seven games left. There's guys. seven games. I mean, that's a good chunk of games. To yeah. See what you can do. And if things can turn around because the temperature is only going to keep going up if things continue to look the way they have. Yep. And I said, Sean McDermott use this, this bullet here. The next one's aimed for him.
I mean, it's just the way the world works in the yep. NFL. Yep. I don't know if it'll be in the off season. I don't know if it'll be a year from a year plus from now. He knows that too. Yeah. All coaches. That's why know he that. made this move. Hey, Patriots may very well fire Bill Belichick and the guy won six Super Bowls. So mm -hmm. let's not pretend, you know, let's not pretend this can't happen. Dan Orlovsky did say also on Pat McAfee, though, that he doesn't believe Allen's mechanics have fallen off. I agree. Yeah, I don't see that. No. I don't see the mechanics. Yeah. Decision making. And that comes from him. And last thing I'm going to say is, and I hear it from people I know, people just responding on Twitter. Hey, Josh, maybe cut down on the golf trips. Hey, Josh, maybe. I was, I was wondering how about less that commercials. Would come up. This is what comes with that. Look, guys are entitled to their free time, but when you don't play up to that level, people are going to look for Absolutely. how much blame goes on you, Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Baker commercial. never Those played. The difference is Baker never played at Josh's level. Correct. Which is true. But Baker was also a first overall pick. He was. So different. It's pretty good in those commercials, though. Loved him. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. Never that good as a player. I mean, he's okay. But Josh Allen, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear people say he's not elite. Josh Allen is an elite I have player. People texting me they should bench Josh yeah, Allen. I know. Like, shut shut up. Molly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rad man. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like that is not gonna happen, but you have to find a way for Allen to get back to feeling like himself. Yep. This stinks. Yeah. Hey, by the way, love the place. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, out Brian Swerda. Brian Swerda. Right here. Appreciate you. I was going to say. He's taking care of us. He's got other stuff, too. I wasn't was expecting for this to be the first podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. We've been oh, like, yes, this is an exciting update. But Dan made the point. Us. Little sleep deprived, a little coffee. Uh, little edgy. Yeah. Little, little edgy. edgy. We, we've, all we've, been, we've all been like yeah. snarking at each other, like <laughs> getting this whole thing set up. It's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, okay. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to like, comment your thoughts on the Dorsey firing, as well as subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, give us a subscription too. For this Please. Videos. Yeah. We always appreciate it. For we Mike Catalana, it. Dan Bates, I'm Jenna Cottrell. Take another bow. Uh, I was going to say, uh, we'll catch you next time here on Love the Buffalo right. Plus channel presented by Connors and This is the Buffalo Plus Podcast, brought to you by Connors and Ferris.